Cuts, he's got Bedoya on the right. Dempsey cuts, still has it. For Jones, low shot, go! Jermaine Jones! Yes, leads by two! I think the first 10 minutes, we a little bit nervous. Well, you know, it's uh, be, uh, when you lose that game, you can be out. But um, I think after 10 minutes, um, we controlled the whole game. And I think we're, we scored uh, enough goals. And I think it's, it shows that we were the better team. This is After Hours with Amy Lawrence. Jermaine Jones scored the second goal of the first half for Team USA against Costa Rica at Soldier Field in Chicago. Nearly 40,000 people in attendance. The Outlaws in full effect to hear the call with J.P. Della Camera on Fox Sports 1. And then after the game, Jermaine admits we were nervous the first 10 minutes. But then the floodgates opened and we were the better team. It's After Hours with Amy Lawrence, CBS Sports Radio. You can continue to weigh in on the Manny Machado versus your Donald Ventura conversation on our Facebook page. <laughs> Wait till you check out the picture that Ben posted to go along with the topic and on Twitter at A Law Radio. But want to spend a couple of minutes with a former MLS head coach and former coach in the U.S. national team system. Thomas Rongen is now with CBS Sports Soccer. And coach, when you look at what the men's national team did against Costa Rica, what jumps out at you as positive, good steps forward after that loss versus Colombia? Well, first and foremost, Amy, five of those players that started today played for me in two World Cups with the under 20 U.S. national team. And, and I know the mentality uh, that this team and these players have. They love to compete. Uh, they've proven now over and over again that they can come back from adversity and, and perform well, which they did in the World Cup against uh, Portugal when they needed a tie to get the round of 16, which they did against Guatemala recently in a must-win to stay alive in the World Cup qualifying phase to Russia, and tonight uh, to stay alive in, in the Copa America to get into the uh, second round and, and don't lose in that first round, so to speak, at home, which happened in the... Uh, uh, the Gold Cup, where they lost against Mexico for a berth in the Confederations Cup to play the European and the South American champions. So it's been a, it's been a rough ride for, for Jurgen Klinsmann, but his team uh, responded tonight, without a doubt. I was, as I was watching the game, uh, up to the point at which Clint Dempsey hit the penalty kick, I was thinking, man, they still look a little tight. Costa Rica still kind of controlling things. After Dempsey had the PK, though, definitely seemed like they relaxed. How much can you tell from their body language, how they're responding about the, this pressure that's on them? Yeah, there's tremendous pressure. You know, in, at home in front of 60,000 people in Soldier Field, they opened this tournament with a loss against Colombia in front of 72,000 people. That they're, they're accustomed to that. But um, we've had a tough time with Latin Central American countries in, in, in the way they perform. And you're right, uh, Amy, the Costa Rica came out the first 10 minutes and showed some technical abilities and, and were able to penetrate in our final third. But you're right, the Clint Dempsey goal allowed us to relax a little bit more and play more of our game and, and be a little more fluid in, in the way we attack. We get a, a good second goal, which is obviously an, an important one, that second one by uh, uh, by Jeremiah uh, Jones on an assist by Clint, uh, Clint Dempsey. Clint Dempsey. Um, and, and this team then coast a little bit to a 4 nothing, a resounding win against Costa Rica. But you're right. This team needs to now use this and look at Paraguay because it ties enough to get to the next round. And Paraguay beats us. We're back to square one. Everybody's going to be screaming for Euron Klinsman's mm -hmm. head again, which they did prior to this game. Uh, so the pressure isn't off yet, but uh, hopefully they can start the next game with more of a uh, good mentality, but also within that checking your emotions and still being able to play your game. And that's a tough thing to do sometimes. Well, you're a coach. You certainly understand uh, the perspective of Jurgen Klinsmann. What's your reaction to this wave of emotion and, and people calling for him to be fired? <laughs> you know, he'll probably get blamed for the 4 nothing win as well. So uh, he, can't, <laughs> he can't win uh, in, in these circumstances. Um, anywhere else in the world, Amy, after the poor performance in the Gold Cup, a poor performance on the road against Guatemala, which they should have won and they didn't, and the start of this tournament, in any country in the world, he would have been fired. The media, the fans, sponsors, uh, owners of particular big clubs in, in those countries, 
the pressure would have been so immense on our president, Sunil Gulati, who also hired him and gave him an extension of his contract to 2018, um, and came up with some choice words. For the first time ever, Sunil Gulati said, hey, it hasn't been good enough. Um, so there is this wave right now, understanding that Princeton needs to perform with his, his team going forward. And if they don't get out of group play, Amy, I don't know what direction this president will take with Jurgen Klinsmann. It might be time to, to go a different direction, maybe. You mentioned when uh, Team USA plays its game. So w- what is its game? What's the game that they would like to be able to step on the pitch every uh, time and, and play? That's a great question, uh, Amy. We're a young soccer country. Um, I don't really think that we have identified a, a real style of play that, 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 that takes decades. Influenced by players and coaches, that, that happens, that gives you a certain DNA. Under Bruce Arena and Bob Bradley, two American coaches uh, that did well with those teams, they were a hardworking, which the U.S. players are always are. They're very fit, they're very athletic. They were mentally strong, but technically and tactically always inferior to most high-level opponents. So we played low pressure. We try to counter. We try to be good on set pieces and try to win games that way. You and Clinton try to change that mentality, make us a better footballing nation. But I just don't know right now if he understands mm. that his players, uh, with all due respect, aren't good enough to execute uh, the way he wants to play. It's become a little bit of a tactical game chaos, I, I hate to say so, under his regime. Coach Thomas Rongen is uh, formerly in the U.S. national team system, is also uh, with MLS for many years, and is now doing analysis for CBS Sports Soccer. Woo! It's after there hours with Amy Lawrence here on CBS Sports Radio. So it sounds like you have a little bit of hesitation about whether or not Coach Klinsman is the right guy to lead this team past the next World Cup. Uh, is it one of those situations where a change would need to be made prior to that World Cup, or do you think it's too late to do that? Um, that's a good question. After this tournament, Amy, they still have a little bit of time before they get back into the World Cup qualifying phase. They've got two games left. St. Vincent uh, Grandings away, which should be a 3-4-5-0 three, you know, three, win, which gets them done in the next round, which is called the Hex with six teams. That includes Mexico, Costa Rica, probably us, maybe Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, and either Panama or, or somebody else. And then two teams from there automatically qualify. So if you want to make a change, you have to do it after this tournament. If you are convinced as a federation or as a president, Sunil Gulati, that that's the way to go because the players are not responding to the instructions, the the overall theme that, that you and Clinton wants to do. I, it all fairness, I mean, I've been fired several times in, in MLS. <laughs> I've, won a, I've won a MLS Cup as well, and that's the way it goes. Um, He's under pressure. Uh, he's handled the pressure very gr- uh, gracefully right now. And, and I still think he's a guy that eventually can stay on and do well. But you are judged on results, I mean, at the end of the day, if they don't make it out of group place, they'll lose against Paraguay in three days. Uh, I really think a change is inevitable and needs to be made. A couple of years ago when Team USA was in the World Cup, close matches, exciting, the country got involved. Uh, Still, though, didn't take a a big step forward. When you compare the team from the last World Cup to Team USA right now, is it better or worse? Well, that's a great question. Uh, My good friend Bruce Arena, who's not a good coach of the LA Galaxy, won some championships with DC United and and the guys and went to two World Cups with our, our uh, U.S. team. In 2002, just to give you a perspective, we were one play away of going to the final four in the World Cup. Right. We, deserved, we deserved to win against Germany. We didn't. We lost one nothing. but we played a great game. And now, fast-forwarding that, we're in, we're in 2016, and you look, hmm, we've never, never gotten that far in World Cup. We get out of group play and we're losing around at 60 most of the time. What progress have we made? Why aren't we producing an American Messi or Ronaldo with so many kids playing? Uh, I think we have, we have some real big problems. I think our, our coaching uh, curriculum is not good enough. We don't have enough good coaches in the lower levels, between 8 and 12, where you, where you really build players technically and tactically. 
and and saying that on any given day we can compete with the best teams in the world. Um, that's the American mentality as well. Bring it on. We'd love to play Brazil, Argentina, and compete with those guys and show that we can play because the rest of the world still looks at the United States aiming as a uh, they're, they're really not a soccer country. They're, they're a baseball country. They're a football country. They're a basketball country. Mm. So these players always feel that they have to prove themselves as, a, as individuals and as a nation, which makes it sometimes very hard to beat. But I, I haven't seen much progress uh, in terms of individual and collective talent from 202 to 2016. You know, though, Americans are not very patient, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> I know that, Amy. I know that. Uh, you can find him on Twitter at T Rongen, R O N G E N, although I know that's our American pronunciation and not uh, his Dutch pronunciation. He's now with CBS Sports Soccer as an analyst, but also former MLS Cup winner and uh, longtime coach, also in the U.S. national team system. Coach, it's really good to catch a couple of minutes. Thank you so much for your insight. Oh, you're welcome, Amy. Take care.